Yay. Okay. So we're going to cover something called significant digits. And some, before we cover that, I want to cover precision and accuracy. These two words um, are very familiar to you. You cover them probably every year in a science class. What is the difference between accuracy and precision? Okay? Accuracy is, in my opinion, and my best definition is how close you get to a true result. True means accurate. True means <coughs> the right answer. True means the exact answer. True means the accepted value. Okay, so like yesterday we had a homework problem or a Delaware problem where we were calculating the density of aluminum. And we said, is this block of metal aluminum? And we came up with a density of 4.0. Then we looked up the value of aluminum and said it's 2.7. Well, that's a lot different. That is definitely not an accurate measurement of aluminum if it's supposed to be, right? So accuracy is how close to the accepted true value you can get. If we're talking about shooting a gun or a bow and arrow at a target, it is, do we hit the bullseye? If we hit the bullseye, we are very accurate, okay? If you're trying for a headshot, in a video game, and you're good at headshots, you are very accurate. Here's an analogy, okay. What does the word precision mean? Precision has a little different meaning, and it has to do with, in my, my, my best way, of, is how repeatable those measurements are, okay? So precision would be, for instance, those of you who have shot bows and arrows, or slingshots or guns, um, how close can you get your cluster together, right? So you shoot five shots, and here's the result. Boom, 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 boom. Wow, that is awesome. If you got this kind of precision, but you're not hitting the middle of the target, you can do it, you can adjust your sights a little bit, right? Um, if you're shooting a bow and arrow, and you're getting very precise, <coughs> but you're not hitting the middle of your target, there's something in your technique that's pulling you off to the side a little bit. Might be in your stance, might be in your draw, might be in your release, might be something in your arrows. I don't know. I don't know enough about archery to make that assessment. But precision is how close each, each measurement is to each other. Accuracy is how close they are to the real answer. The real answer. <coughs> now, can we have both? Yeah. If all of these are right here in the middle, then I have good accuracy and good precision. Can I be lacking both? Yeah, I'm just a horrible shot, right? I get one up here, and one over there, and one here, and one off the chart up there. Okay, that's horrible precision and horrible accuracy. So I can have one or the other, or both, or neither. <coughs> now, in science, these are really, really important because we want to have good precision. That means our lab procedures are very good. We have good technique at using our burettes and our pipettes and, and our scales, okay? But we also want to be able to get accurate. So that means our instruments have to be able to measure to a certain level of precision. So these two words lead us to a discussion. I'll come back to you that next week of significant figures, okay? So this is the topic for our next 20 minutes or so. Significant figures. Why do we even care about them? I think yesterday I read you a little um, quote from Jack Overstreet about why it was important, okay? When we measure things, um, here's the reason, no. Let me give you an example before I go into this. Suppose I have two numbers that I measure in a lab. Suppose I'm calculating uh, uh, something about Boyle's law, pressure times volume, right? And Boyle's law says pressure times volume is always a constant. So suppose I measure the volume of a gas and it's three liters. Exactly. And I'm able to measure it like this. And suppose I measure the pressure and the pressure is 
um, say 92.3 kilopascals, something like this, okay? And I want to calculate P times V, so I get those two numbers and multiply them together. David, do that for me for 92.3 times 3.00. And this is going to be liter or kilopascals, okay? The units are going to be really horrible. But, so, so this answer, if I use this answer, this answer is more precise than this or this. And that can't be. I can never do a calculation and have an answer that says it's more precise than the numbers I started with. Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to look at something called significant figures or significant digits. If this has three significant digits, which it does, and this has three significant digits, which it does, my answer can never have more than three significant digits. So I would have to round this off. Sometimes you guys multiply things together in class, and you'll get a number that's like 82.336945. And you just write down everything your calculator has. You can't do that, OK? Because you multiply two numbers together that each had a couple digits, and you get something horrible like this, and it's like, no, there's no way you could possibly measure something out to the hundred thousandth place. Okay? So, what are significant figures? Significant figures, as many times, are limited by the equipment we use. Who remembers in the lab last week when you measured the cork on the digital scale, what did you get? Darius. Okay, what did you write down on your paper? No, no, don't worry about it. You had to write. I was just okay. wondering, what did you write down? Oh, I'm writing down two grams. Okay, good. So nobody, hopefully, in here wrote down 2.0 grams. Because the scale couldn't measure 0 0.0. That digital scale can only measure to the closest gram. It was either one or two or three grams. And if you measured the cork on the digital scale, you probably got two grams. It didn't tell you if it was 2.1 or 2.2 <coughs> or 2.3. It might have been 1.9 or 1.8 or 1.7. But that particular scale only measures to the closest gram, so it has a limit to its precision. Okay? Think about a graduated cylinder. Suppose I have a graduated cylinder here with a meniscus in it, okay? And we're trying to read this graduated cylinder. And so somewhere in here is my meniscus. And I'm reading here 41, and there's 42, and there's, I'm going to change this a little bit, 43 up here, and 44, okay? So I look at the meniscus, and it comes out right here. And what do I write down for my answer? Nine. Close. Here it's Maybe. What would you write, Jen? Maybe. What would you write, Brett? Okay. Anybody else? Okay, so that, that last number. We know it's not 42, we know it's not 43, we know it's somewhere in between, right? Everybody agrees with that. It's somewhere in between here. That last digit is, we have to put something there, because I know it's not 42 exactly, I can't put 42.0. I know it's not 43 exactly, so I can't put 43.0. So I have to estimate that last digit. That last digit is an important number, but it's always got a little bit of question mark to it, right? It's, it's 42 point something. Now you'd be okay putting 42.5. 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8. Nobody's going to be wrong. But that last <coughs> digit is going to have a little bit of unknown to it. So significant figures include all of the known digits, 42, and one estimated one. What's that last one going to be? Point, uh, okay? 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7. Significant figures depend on the equipment we're measuring. So if I'm measuring something like this, I'm going to show you one here in just a second. Uh, this one has inches. 
on this side, half inch, quarter inch, eighth of an inch, nothing small. So if I get something in between, Noah, I got something between four and four and one eighth, maybe halfway between four and four and one sixteenth. Yeah, yeah, four and one sixteenth. He's going to guess at it, say it's halfway between four and four and eight. So four and one sixteenth. That last digit, <coughs> okay, is going to be estimated. <coughs> Very good. Okay. And here's another example. So this one's in centimeters. I know for sure, so we're measuring the length of this metal rod or something up here. Here it is, okay? I know it's between 5 and 6, so I'm sure about the 5. I know it's between 5.2 and 5.3, so I'm positive about 5.2 something. And then I have to estimate, okay? Where does that fall? I'm going to say 4.2 or 5.23 in this case or something like that. 5.24, 5.22. But that last digit is my estimated, okay, just like this one, and just like our scale with our core part. You wrote two. It might have been 1.8. Hopefully, you've got something like 2.2 or 2.3 on the triple beam balance, which has higher precision than the digital. Okay. So here's some rules. I want you to jot these down uh, for significant figures. And then I'm going to show you how to apply them. First, let's understand them. Rule number one, everything that is one to nine is significant. Any numbers that are not zero, so that's an easy one to remember, right? So if I got a number that looks like this, 56.432, those are all significant. If I have a number that looks like this, 41.111001. Okay? Significant, 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 significant. All of the non zero digits are significant. Now, rule two goes right along with this. What do I do if there's a bunch of zeros stuck in the middle of a number? Well, those are also important. I can't just delete these zeros. This is not the same as 41.1111. Okay? These numbers are important if they are between non-zero numbers. So if I tell you that Emily is um, 65.3321 kilograms, and that's her mass, I am telling you that she, I can measure all the way out to here. I'm telling you that, that I know for sure. It's not 3320, it's not 3323. I'm telling you that last digit I can actually measure with a little bit of uncertainty all the way down to that place. If I told you she weighs 65.3001, same thing is true. All these are important. I'm telling you, I can actually measure something down to the 10,000th of a kilogram, which would be hard to do, but I'm using it as an illustration here, okay? So non-zero numbers are significant. Zeros in between non-zero numbers like this, or 1.0000001. Well, all of those are important because uh, this number tells me I can actually measure that. Rule number three. All final zeros to the right of a decimal. All of that is important. All final zeros to the right of a decimal are significant. And again, if I put these zeros here, okay, if I said that pork is two grams, like Darius said, I'm saying, I know it's somewhere between one and a half and two and a half. If I tell you that cork was 2.0 grams, I'm telling you I know that it's between 2.05 or 1.95 and 2.05. If I tell you I know for sure that cork was 2.00 grams, I'm telling you I know for sure that cork is between 1.95 and 2.0, I can measure something that with this accuracy, this precision, wrong word, this precision. Okay, so this means no matter how many zeros I put to the right of this decimal, if I write those down, I can actually measure to that place. Tenths, hundredths, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, millions, whatever the case may be. So all of the zeros to the right of a decimal place are significant. Rule number four. 
placeholders are not. So this is the first one we have with the word not in it. Not significant. Write that down. I'm going to illustrate. <laughs> We're going to measure the population of the state of Alabama. Okay, I'm guessing here, but I know roughly. Um, okay, let's write this number down. 5,432,000. If I write this number down, like it is right now, I am saying I know that the population of Alabama is somewhere between 5,430,000 and 5,440,000. I know it's you know not quite halfway, and so I, I know that four of these numbers are important. These would be called four sig figs. That's my abbreviation for significant figures. Four sig figs. What are these? These are placeholders. These are trailing zeros. There's no decimal here. Or if there's a decimal, it changes it. There's no decimal here. And I can actually double check this by writing <coughs> this number as a scientific notation. Yesterday we said it has to be a number between 1 and 10. 5.432 in this case. Times 10 to the 6. And if I write it as scientific notation, guess what? All of my insignificant zeros disappear. I have four sig figs here. I have four sig figs here. Do I see that? So these are called placeholders. They just mean I've got four significant figures here, four, and these are the same number. Those zeros, those last three zeros are not significant. They don't tell me that I can measure exactly the population of Alabama right now to the person. This is not saying that. It's telling me I know within a thousand people that is 5,432,000. Not sure about that last one. Might be 5,431,000. Might be 5,433,000. But we're in the right ball. Good? Everybody see this? Significant figures. There's four significant figures here. Rule number five. Counting numbers and defined constants are disregarded. Please, this is... This is uh, confusing. So just put counting numbers and constants are disregarded. We're not going to include them when we discuss significant figures. I'm going to explain. <coughs> counting numbers is if I'm counting something. I want you to, at the top of this section in your notes here to write these are measured values only. Okay, so significant figures applies to things in the lab and in science that we are measuring. Now this says if I can count something, I count in this classroom 13 <coughs> people. I, am I unsure? Is there 13 and a half maybe? Or maybe 12 and a half people in this room? No, there's 13 people. I mean, besides me, there's 13 people in this room. A counting number is an exact number. It's not going to have any significant figures because it is an exact number. If I say there are five pieces of paper in this stack, um, I'm saying, you know, I, I count them. One, two, three, four, five. I'm not saying I think there's four and a half or maybe five and a half. But I know there's five pieces of paper. It's something I can count. Not measure, but count. Counting numbers and a constant. It's a constant like pi. What is pi? Pi has an exact value. 3.14159 with an infinite number. I'm just going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to worry about pi. Okay? Because it has so many significant figures, it, it, we just disregard it. It is a constant number. Okay? So there are certain values we find in science that are constant numbers like the ideal gas law constant, or uh, Avogadro's constant, or um, the constant that we use in the universal law of gravitation, 6.01 times 10 to negative 11. Okay. So, how do we use these? Okay, just a quick warning. Calculators, in some cases, have no clue 
they don't know. Now, some of the new calculators have a switch you can turn on in your settings, and that setting would allow you to, to look at your significant figures. But your basic calculators, you multiply 6.543 times 8.111, and you're going to get like as many digits as that display can hold, right? It's going to have like, you know, 82.66, 552, uh, it's just going to give you all, and all of those, the calculator doesn't know, so it doesn't know about significant figures. Number two, you can never in science have an answer that is more precise than the numbers you started with. You can never have an answer that has more sig figs than you start with. Okay, going back to the pressure times volume, right? If I know the pressure, is you know 152.3 and I know the volume is 2.10 and I multiply those two numbers together I can't get this big long number because I can only measure as precise as the numbers I start with and that's why we're, what we're going to do here with significant figures okay answers can never have more sig figs than you start with Okay, now, this everybody should know this, how to round off. So I'm going to go very fast, okay? If it's five or higher, we round up. If it's, five or lo if it's lower than five, we round down, okay? If the figure is less than five, round down. We don't change it. If it's greater than five or equal to five, we usually round up. These are the rounding rules. I don't like rule three. I just kind of ignore rule three. That's me. So I won't grade you off. There's a real special rule about rounding off having to do with the five, if you have an exact five. I usually just say if it's five or greater, round it up. If it's less than five, don't round off. It just, it just trump it. Okay, so let's, um, here's our two rules for sig figs, okay? If I add or subtract, I have this rule. If I multiply or divide, I have this rule. Then you can jot that down, and then we're going to do a couple of examples until we're done. Okay, so in addition or subtraction, we have to round our answer off to the same number of decimal places. And we're going to look at the two or three numbers we're adding or subtracting, and we always have to choose the one with the least precision. I'll explain that in a second. If we multiply or divide, we just find the one with the least number of sig figs, and our answer has to be rounded off to that number of sig figs. We'll let you jot that down, then we'll clear the screen and do one example of each of them. Okay, so in addition or subtraction, we're worried about which of the original pieces of information we're adding or subtracting have the least precision, and then with multiplication to begin, division are concerned with picking the number with the least number of sig figs. These are two different rules. Okay? They don't go together. <coughs> addition and subtraction this way, multiplication and division this way. Okay, clear this. Your homework last night dealt with this, and so I just want to see how you did with it over the weekend, and then we'll pick it up Monday as well. How about if I write a number? I'm not done. Stay with me here. Um, Six point zero five three one. How many sig figs? No one. Um, four, five. Okay, all these are significant. Okay, so all five of these because I got non-zeros and ones in between. Suppose I want to multiply this by a number that I've measured in the lab, and it's uh, 3.22. Okay? So i got two numbers in a lab report. I'm multiplying these together. David's going to crunch these for me real quick. Or I have to look at the first. Okay. 19.49092. Now, this would be a wrong answer. 
Okay, because I cannot have an answer that is more precise to the 10 millionths place than these numbers that I start with. Okay, so if I'm multiplying or dividing, the rule's really easy. How many sig figs here know it's <coughs> five? How many sig figs in this number, Emily? Three. What's the smaller of those two numbers, Peyton? So my answer can only have three significant figures. So I'm going to have to take this answer and round it off to 19.5. Okay, so multiplication division, pretty easy. You just look at how many sig figs, and our answer always has to have the same number as the least of the two numbers we start with. We're doing the addition and subtraction on Tuesday. I have graciously erased your homework assignment. Oh, so much. So you can enjoy your last day off Monday. Before Christmas, I'm no, just kidding. Have a great weekend, guys. Stay safe. Thank you. We should get another day off, I think, in August. Do we get? Yeah. Yeah. We used to have a teacher in service day in October. Well, we might. We usually go around the board. Okay, we can use the truck off.